What's up, guys? Welcome back to a new week. It's uh, Monday, the November 15th. Will is away. Uh, it's 4.31 in the afternoon. We've been working our ass off. Will's out in Texas with um, Firebird. What else is he doing? Playing with helicopters. drive tanks for uh, the Gundys. He went and played with Vincent Hancock on the Olympic uh, skeet field. What else did he do? He was all over the place. Well, meanwhile, we're all just sitting here, sitting on our computers. It's literally been like seven hours of just staring at my computer screen. No. Nothing too exciting going on. There's literally nothing exciting. Gabby hasn't sang today. She hasn't barked today. <laughs> I have it. Have you, done, have you done any strangling today? There's no strangling yet today. It's literally been a, a boring Monday. Or what, what were you doing in this vlog that I was editing today? Uh, oh, great. I think you were like trying to be like the grudge from The Exorcist or something. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> that sounds about right. Sounds about right. Um, um, but I literally will never, ever, ever do that in front of a man I'm interested in. No one will ever, I pray no one ever finds our vlogs. Vlogs? Vlogs. Every time I say it wrong, Blog. I pray no one ever finds my vlogs because your I, vlogs. there would be a lot of explaining to do and I just don't want that. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> like the bit about me going like this on my desk. Oh yeah. And belching and every single desire. <laughs> they secretly Why they like have found it. me. I get blocked. <laughs> they secretly have found it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, mm. no, they just felt it in the wind. What? The guy, the guy from this weekend, literally thought I was a witch. Really. I don't know why, I don't know how he said it. I was like, you're, you gotta be kidding me right now. What did he say? Like, what, how did he, that go? He, I don't know why they think I'm a witch. <laughs> I did nothing witchy. I don't believe that. I really didn't do anything witchy. <laughs> Other than I kind of, <laughs> I just might have picked off some of his hair. Like, I cast him through some blood from his finger. I know it all. Wait, did you do that, actually? No. Oh. <laughs> that sounds like something you might do. All I did this weekend was cast a spell on him. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> All of a sudden I'm a witch because I put one of his toenails in a cauldron? Jesus. I can't get away with anything. Oh my gosh. This is what Ben wanted to capture. <laughs> ben called me a secretary for this. All I'm doing is cutting up stickers for the Gundies, um, which are gonna go in the envelopes for the invitations. That's That's it. Apparently I look like a secretary while doing it. I had an epic, epic mess up. And when I bought my returning ticket home to Myrtle Beach, I booked it for next Monday. So you can imagine how when I went to the airport and I tried to get into TSA pre-check, they all laughed at me and said, sir, you are uh, a week ahead of schedule. So needless to say, I had to stay an extra day in Dallas uh, which sucked, but I'm back here ready to work and um, it's gonna be one hell of a week. I'm uh, not exactly sure what's planned, but I know we have F1 Firearms coming into town. We have a couple meetings with Battle Buddies. Um, Hillary, who I'm talking to right now, she is cranking away on Firebird, the redesign for their packet, and a couple other clients. So, oh, and of course we have to work on the Humvee. So we have one more video to do for the Army. Uh, among all the other things, and of course, Gundy stuff. So stay tuned for another fun-filled week here at the Forge. Good day, good day. It's I haven't had coffee yet. We worked out this morning. Huh? We're working yeah, out. I worked out last night. Do you want coffee? Yeah, I mean, you have your coming almost every day now. Good. Hey. Second day in a row. I'm working out today at 12. Let's go. Uh, everyone's back in the office today, and my brother's here. What'd you say, Gabby? So. And Will's wearing a vest. Is that a Gucci vest? 
That was like a Gucci. A Gucci. A Gucci. This is a Gucci vest. <laughs> the Louis Vuitton. Hey man, you got that Gucci vest. <laughs> oh, she's the cover account? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yes. No. I'm buying it. Have you looked at her bank account? $28,000. I'm buying no. it. I already got it sold. I already sold it for thirty five. To who I think it is? Yep. Damn. And guess, oh, guess where? Can we finish? Guess ours? where the Humvee is? Can we finish? It's in Utah. It's next to Dan. Can we finish ours first? No. The two that we have. The what? Can we can we get that one wrapped? Yes. Or right align? I don't yes, know. Yes, right So the Gundy's is happening in February. Uh, it's at Drive Tanks again. Dude, I, I'd love to have you guys out there. It's so, um, we're, we'll be- Is that in uh, South Texas? Yep, uh, two hours outside of San Antonio. It's a day event. So it's it's that Saturday on Friday, we're doing like a sponsor appreciation day. It's it's basically uh -huh. gonna be a day dedicated to the sponsors, right? So, so like one of the biggest pieces of feedback we got last year was, hey, all the influencers got to do all these cool things, shoot the guns, um, drive the tanks, shoot the tanks, go on the safari ride, shoot the flamethrower, like all the diff different activities we had. But as a sponsor, like you literally just set up a shot, they're just sitting at their booth, like they couldn't. So we were like, okay, let's let's show some love to the sponsors. They're, they're the ones investing into this and have a, day, awesome. have a day where they can network internally, because a lot of the times the best networking happens between other brands. Uh, and then also go around and shoot other people's guns and, and talk about their products. And then uh, if you want to do like, we're going to have a shoot out this house this year. We're going to have uh, ax throwing or bow and arrow. We're not sure yet. Just a whole bunch of like different activities to make it fun, you know? So allow that, give them a free day to do that without any pressure of, of having to sit at their booth. But uh, yeah, so a uh, long story short, it's a, it's a one day event. It's a full day, so uh, range day starts at nine uh, or eight or like eight thirty nine. Um, fire or live fire uh, till about one p.m. and then range goes cold for the rest of the day, and the back half of the afternoon is all the activities and the expo center. So or the expo. So all the sponsors are set up at their booth. You know, that's when you can network, film B-roll, like have conversations, whatever you need to do on that front. And then all the activities will be going on that I just mentioned, the tank rides, the safari, uh, shooting the tanks, um, the flamethrower, a couple other different fun things we got planned. The shoe house, we're doing a, a 3,500 square foot shoe house. So um, basically our, our thought process with the range day is like, what, what event can we put together? Cause we, you know, you go to a range day, it's basically the same thing every time, but um, how could we build out this story for people that, that came to visit it? Whether, whether it's like for their Instagram or for their YouTube, range day content's boring. So let's do something different. And like, there's this whole storyline essentially, like uh, uh, you come in, you get your black rifle coffee, then you walk over to, to the fire line, you shoot some guns, but then you grab some, you know, you, we're getting this eight foot pizza, this custom eight foot, foot pizza made. It's actually a local, local guy out, out in the area. Get, get a slice of pizza, you know, this massive pizza, and then you go shoot a tank, or you you talk to the vendors, you go see a giraffe, like, uh, there's just this entire storyline that you could flush out for, for content. Giraffe. They, uh, dude, they have giraffes, yeah. They literally have giraffes. <laughs> That's fucking weird. And then, the, and then in the evening, we have the Gundy ceremony, which is, it's gonna be a live stream. It's, that's pretty straightforward. It's just a big party for everyone attending. Um, and then after the ceremony is over, we're gonna keep that short and sweet, probably about an hour. Uh, then it's just gonna be kind of like circle bar time is what we're calling it, quote unquote. And we'll have um, just time for people to drink, network, have fun, take a load off. Um, we'll probably do beer pong tournament. And then we're gonna have uh, drunk laser tag. So the shoot house, obviously you can't use real guns when everyone's hammered, but we're gonna do, la we're gonna do laser tag, turn the shoot house into this massive laser tag. So. Um, it should be pretty, should be, and then we got a couple, couple surprises up our sleeves, so it should be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah dude, I, we just want to have fun, you know. I mean, except for all that dust under there, oh my god. The tile's falling off. Oh, fucking please. It's a shit show. 
So this holster comes from a company called Geco. And look at that. Isn't that cool? So this holster is designed, if you want to carry different guns, different platforms, you just get the holster for it itself. And you can leave it on and you can put on different guns. So I carry my Glock in the same setup. And all you do is just grab it there. And it's really cool if you're sitting at your desk like me. You can take it right off. Anyhow, it is Thursday. I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog so far. It hasn't really been anything exciting, unfortunately. It's been pretty boring for the most part. Um, but, but I promise if you stay with it and hang tight and keep watching, we are gonna blow lots of stuff up courtesy of Firebird, their new 65 exploding target that we are currently working on their new packaging, which is super cool. So we're gonna be out on the range on Saturday with F1 firearms, shooting some machine guns, and of course, blowing some stuff up. So you guys gotta stay tuned for that. Um, what else? What else? Why don't you have a seat? Let's do story time. Let's share a story. So we're gonna go back ways, ways, ways back. And I'm gonna share a little story on how I became an entrepreneur. When I graduated college, I was going for uh, my psychology degree. And then halfway through, I uh, said, I don't know what I'm gonna do with a psychology degree per se in the business field. So I knew I needed some sort of business, formal business education. So I double majored and I went to business and psychology. Uh, and ironically enough, those two majors have been just priceless. Um, you know, I was never really good in business classes. I, I understood the concept of it. Uh, I'm terrible taking tests, absolutely terrible. So grades were atrocious. Uh, I believe in my psychology class, I was like one of the worst in my whole graduating class. Um, it's not because I didn't understand the information, it was just because I couldn't interpret it to taking a test, but I could tell you about it and talk about it. Um, so anyhow, with that being said, I graduated with a psychology and business degree um, from King's College in Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. Uh, and from that moment on, I'm very fortunate, knock on wood, I have never had to work for anyone in my entire life. Uh, I have always been the individual that signs my own checks. So for all the individuals out there that are entrepreneurs and uh, self-employed, you know that's a good or a bad situation. Good meaning tons of freedom, you can do whatever you want, you don't have to listen to anybody. But with that being said, every day that goes on, there's no guarantee of a paycheck or getting paid at all. So the only person you can ever blame is yourself. So my first business after college was Garden State Custom Fencing. Yep, I used to dig holes and put up fences. Everything from chain link to vinyl to aluminum to automated gate openers. Uh, I got a really big break with Costco when I did their 10 foot high interior chain link fences. That was super cool. And I learned about flanges and all these different codes and all this stuff. And then I got a really big contract with Verizon Wireless to do the cell phone towers. I did all the fences around uh, the cell phone towers and I did that with barbed wire, really cool contract. But in my beginning days, I was extremely immature. Um, I definitely considered myself an immature entrepreneur. Um, I had no money skills. I had no knowledge of organization per se. And most importantly, you know, I would make X and spend triple X. Um, I didn't understand that value because I never thought the money would stop coming in. So I was making very, very good money in New Jersey. Um, but then when it stopped coming in, you know, it's like, what do you do? Wasn't prepared for that, never thought about that. I wasn't, never put that to uh, paper. So with that being said, the story of the day is everyone out there that wants to start a business, um, failure is one of your best friends. Failure makes you not only understand what potentially could happen, but it's also the separating factor that 
puts people into categories that want to continue being an entrepreneur or do not. You can climb up a ladder and fall down and some people decide to stay down and they go get a job and that's fine. And others get back up and they fall again, they get back up and they fall again. Uh, I've fallen many times. So failures have taught me a lot. And from that, I try not to repeat those mistakes over and over and over. Um, because at the level I'm at now, you know, failure really sucks. Uh, I don't want to experience that again. So everyone out there, if you have a dream and you have a goal, you know, it's okay if it doesn't happen right away. The key is just don't give up on it. Always go out and strive for everything you want and never give up. And if someone says it's stupid, as long as you believe in it and you really think it can happen, go do it. But you do have to understand there is a time where you have to go, okay, this might not be working and adapt and overcome and try something else. Just don't give up. So that's the story for today. And uh, we'll get back soon. <laughs> Bedazzly jewels. Bedazzly jewels. No, here's your ear. Your ear is for free if you buy a pair of earrings. Will I do your nipples there? <laughs> No. <laughs> child stop. Oh, yeah. That's all right, I'll whip out my nipples for some piercings. Maybe they'll pierce your balls. <laughs> for some children. <laughs> Can we get a little, like, dazzle gun and welcome the dazzle himself? Oh. I'll do it. His nipples. Oh my god. Get the little nipperoos going. You would I'm do all, it too. I'm all down for yeah, it. Yeah, you would. Takes pasties to a whole new level. I'll pat my nipples for some You have. Multiple times? Why? For wrestling season, I always had to take them out to wrestle. So during season, I couldn't keep nipple rings in. Did you ever get a stab in while you wrestled? Uh, yeah, I got, no, I got a ringworm a couple times. That was gross. Yeah, that shouldn't sound fun. You're no. supposed to drink cranberry juice for it. For ringworm? No, just uh, to stop yourself from getting like infections. Yeah, I mean, wrestling is a dirty, dirty sport. I got a dirty, tattoo. Dirty. My tattoo the next day got severely infected in my body. Oh my God. I wrestled that day. Ew. You almost, and you wrestled that day? Yeah! Zero, zero F's You almost died? Family man! I got a hospital. Actually? Yeah, from this tattoo right here. Died of, uh, this tattoo almost killed life. me. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it opened up and it got infected. My veins started popping up all the way to my... Oh if it went gosh. to my heart, I would've died. Jeez. He's like, it's making its way downtown. Yeah. It's making its way downtown. Yeah, it was pretty big. I started waiting on it. I got get it coming up. Hey, hey! <laughs> Do we have HR? I need to call HR. Hello, HR department. How you doing? How can I help you? That looks almost like I'm crazy. Let me, uh, let me give you a number. Ready for my number? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> if anyone's wondering why I'm drinking my water from this big water bottle, it's because Maggie spitefully grabbed me it when I asked her to get me a big one from the Food Lion after I forgot to get her paper clips. She asked me to get her water at the store before and she walks in and gets those. <laughs> What'd you say? I was like, like Maggie, weren't you supposed to get Gabby something? And I'm really wounded. She usually gets like the, they're like eight, all 20 all ounces. And I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> that was heavy. That was aggressive. That was heavy. <laughs> it really isn't though. She, wore, she was mad though at the time. She was real mad. Cause I forgot her paper clips. Which is an honest mistake. Yeah, but didn't she remind you like four times? <laughs> yes, and she goes, I'm not gonna forget your paper clips. I really did say that. <laughs> I forgot, sometimes that happens. She said, as soon as I walked out the front door. Maggie, I wrote this song for you. To apologize for the paper Not clips. again. <laughs> Maggie, I'm really sorry about your paper clips. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need to go. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's apologizing about my paper clips. Don't feel bad, I'll find out his employees are doing anything. We're over here having like serious meetings and y'all are singing. Oh, okay. look at me, I'm paper clipping stuff. <laughs> when I get my career going, you're gonna be really upset you weren't nice to me because <laughs> when they ask me who helped me get there, your name might not be listed. <laughs> I, I pay your I pay your bills right now. Yeah, what career? <laughs> what about lady My the, singing career, Jay. So act like lady, you don't know. What about lady in the bathroom at that well, the American Legion. I was singing in the bathroom with my sister there. I was probably like seven or eight. And this old woman comes in out of nowhere and is like, oh sweetie, don't quit your day job. <laughs> I bawled my eyes out. My sister laughed for like seven or eight. I was like seven or eight. What was wrong with that old woman? Like this she 
she's dead now, so who really is the winner? Hi, guys. Is she dead? Probably. She was old. Okay. I guess she Unless she's eating around. garlic every day and really healthy. Kyle! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you just want to come over for ramen? Sure. <laughs> he was being. You really do? Today? Yeah, it's night. Oh, oh. We're making a special ramen meal. Aww. That just sounds fun. <laughs> oh, don't say things like that that might hurt him on the blog. <laughs> blog. Hey, he's gonna find out that he wasn't. <laughs> well, we just had with Kyle on, so we can add him on at the same time. Okay. This is our official invite. He'll see it in the vlog. <laughs> <laughs> well, just let you know, we were invited to Robin. close to me. You know, this is the time I wish I had my little chain. Zap, zap, zoop, zip, zoop. I need you to hold still, please. Okay. Genuinely didn't expect that. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Wow. <laughs> so today I think we're doing something that no one has done before. We have a CMMG upper that is chambered in 4.6. By the way, it has that fun switch. That's kind of epic, actually. There is nothing better than ending a range day with some full auto fun. Big shout out to F1 Firearms for providing these awesome guns. Three, two, one. Oh, words. Nice. We're in so much trouble. So in trouble. Let's leave. <laughs>